Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. After several weeks of relative quiet, Palestinian Islamists have launched a rocket late last night from the northern Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities. The United Nations warned that hopes for the realization of a two-state solution continue to be replaced by the rising fears of future annexation by Israel of territories on which the Palestinians aspire to establish their future states. In a video purporting to show the leader of the Islamic State, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi vows to continue the battle of Islam against Christianity around the world indefinitely. After several weeks of relative quiet, Palestinian Islamists have launched a rocket late last night from the northern Gaza Strip toward Israel's southern communities. Thankfully, the rocket landed in the Mediterranean Sea, off the shoreline of an Israeli coastal town, causing no injuries or damage. Upon the request of Israel's military censor, TV7 will not reveal the exact location of the site of impact, which could help Islamists improve their aim in future attacks. Meanwhile, an IDF official told TV7 that while Israel views Hamas as solely responsible for all terror-related offenses that emanate from the Gaza Strip, the Iranian-backed Islamic Jihad was responsible for last night's rocket fire. According to the official, who asked to remain anonymous, despite close coordination between the Islamic Jihad and Hamas, the latter was kept in the dark. The military official revealed the presiding IDF assessment, in which the Islamic Republic of Iran, by means of its Palestinian proxy Islamic Jihad, is actively seeking to undermine the Egyptian-mediated ceasefire between the Gaza Strip and Israel. Furthermore, in an unprecedented statement on its Twitter page, the IDF spokesperson's unit cited the Islamic Jihad commander in the northern Gazan enclave, Baha Abu Atta, as the terrorist responsible for the rocket fire last night and efforts to bring about an escalation. While it stopped short from elaborating on a possible military response, naming Abu Atta raises speculation of the possible future targeting of the terrorist. Meanwhile, in response to the Palestinian attack, the IDF announced its decision to limit the fishing zone off the coast of Gaza from 8.1 to 3.2 nautical miles until further notice. Now to a related matter, it has been cleared for publication that the Islamist Hamas planned a terrorist attack against Israelis during their country's recent elections period. The Israeli security agency Shin Bet announced in a statement that in a joint operation with the IDF, an attempted suicide car bombing was successfully thwarted. Just nine days prior to the April 9 elections, a suspected Hamas operative from the West Bank village of Azaim was apprehended. The interrogation that followed established that the suspect, 23-year-old Yechia Abudia, was recruited via social media and was instructed by his Hamas handlers in the Gaza Strip to prepare a vehicle filled with explosives for the purpose of committing a suicide terror attack. The investigation further revealed that the proposed target was the West Bank city of Ma'ale Adumim, which is located 7 kilometers east of Jerusalem, where there would have been a high concentration of civilians and soldiers. A senior security official underscored in a written statement that Hamas in Gaza is constantly working to recruit operatives from Judea and Samaria, which is the biblical term for the West Bank, to carry out murderous terror attacks against Israelis in order to undermine the security and stability of the area. The official further noted that Israel's security apparatus has foiled many such attacks in recent years and will continue anti-terrorism operations against Hamas. The Islamist Hamas did not immediately respond to TV7's request for comment. Now to the United Nations headquarters in New York, where Undersecretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs Rosemary Di Carlo has warned that hopes for the realization of a two-state solution continue to be replaced by the rising fear of future annexation by Israel of territories on which the Palestinians aspire to establish their future state. In a periodic Security Council briefing, which provides a UN report regarding the preceding three months, Under Secretary General Di Carlo insisted that the presiding reality threatens the prospects of just and lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Under the pressure of violence, settlement expansion, unilateral measures, inter-Palestinian divisions, and deepening mutual trust, the prospects for a just and lasting peace remains ever more elusive. Hopes for the realization of a two-state solution continue to be replaced by the rising fears of future annexation. 
the possibility of establishing a viable and contiguous Palestinian state continues to be eroded by facts on the ground. The United Nations has repeatedly warned that the conflict cannot be managed in perpetuity. The status quo will only lead to further deterioration of the situation, radicalization on all sides, more suffering and conflict. Among others, the United Nations official urged to immediately seize the indiscriminate rocket fire toward Israel's civilian population, yet stopped short from condemning the Islamist groups, namely Hamas, for bearing the responsibility. During the reporting period, Palestinian militants fired 30 rockets and mortars from Gaza toward Israel. The indiscriminate launching of rockets and mortars toward Israel, the, towards the Israeli civilian population is prohibited by international humanitarian law and must immediately cease. Several incendiary balloons were also launched from Gaza into southern Israel. This must stop. Hamas must also ensure that protests remain peaceful and prevent provocations near the fence, including attempts to breach it. With regard to the Israeli-Lebanese border, Under Secretary General de Kaula revealed that the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon, which is mandated with observing the peace along the security barrier, chaired a tripartite meeting with members of the Lebanese Armed Forces and Israeli Defense Forces. While stopping short from elaborating on the contents of the meeting, Di Carlo stressed that the breach of Security Council Resolution 1701 by the Lebanese-Iranian-backed Hezbollah demanded immediate follow-up by the Beirut government, a demand relayed to Lebanese security authorities by UNIFIL Commander Major General Stefano Del Col. UNIFIL has now confirmed the existence of five tunnels three of which it has confirmed cross the blue line and constitute violation of Resolution 1701. The UNIFIL force commander informed the commander of Lebanese Armed Forces and Minister of Defense, Boussab, of UNIFIL's findings and requested urgent follow-up. Now in other news, a video that was published on an Islamic State media network purported to show the leader of the Islamic State praising the heinous bombings in Sri Lanka, where the extreme Muslim group conducted a massacre against Christian worshippers celebrating Easter Sunday, claiming the lives of more than 250 people and injuring more than 500. In the video, a man purported to be the leader of the Islamic State admitted partial defeat against the Western forces targeting his aspired caliphate. That said, he vowed to continue Islam's battle against Christians all over the world for an indefinite period of time. it is important to know that there continue to be many conflicting reports over whether the Islamic State leader is truly alive and the CIA had no immediate comment on the video. Thank you for watching us. I would like to also specially thank all of our supporters for the past almost 10 years as today we mark broadcast number 2200 for TV7 Israel News. I would like to give all glory to God for this and also to encourage you to continue to pray for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov. We will see you again tomorrow at the same time.